<clears throat> so round five, Chicago Open. I was uh, somewhat surprisingly paired against Grandmaster Jeffrey Zhang, who was the uh, top seed of the event. And uh, incredibly strong player, like 2,700, you know, US top 10. Um, and uh, yeah, but I was happy to play. I mean, you know, playing against uh, such a strong player is always, uh, always a privilege. And I tried to, you know, really tried to, to do my best. Um, and yeah, there was a little bit of time to prepare for the game, really not much. Uh, but also, Jeffrey Zhang is like impossible to prepare for. He just plays like so many different things. So I just tried to look at like some tricky stuff he might <laughs> throw at me, but I don't think I I was able to predict what what he ended up um, doing. And maybe I, I should have um, should have anticipated it more. I'm not sure. So he starts off with Knight f6, e6, d5, uh, Knight c3. And he goes for the semi-slav, which he has played before, but you know, it was not really my focus during uh, preparation. And um, I thought for a little bit here, I ended up deciding to play e3 and queen c2. Um, this is, of course, one of the big main moves here. I've also played bishop e2 a little bit as well, um, which I think leads to kind of dry positions. And I felt like I want something a little bit more um, a little bit more interesting. So I play queen c2. He goes bishop d6, bishop d3, takes on c4, takes. So this is like the typical uh, anti Moran or, or whatever you want to call it. Call it b5, bishop d3, bishop b7. And uh, I castle here. He castles. And uh, white has a lot of moves. Um, but here I decided to go for knight to g5, which is definitely not the main move in the position. Um, but it's kind of an interesting choice. I think nowadays the main line is like a3 or e4, and okay, lots of theory there. Um, I thought knight g5 is kind of an interesting move because the idea is to attack h7 and also to play knight g4. And if black just plays like the solid like h6, knight e4, and we get something like this, generally white gets a very like safe game and it's up to black still to equalize. And in general, I think white has like almost no risk in, in this position. Um, black is trying to get c5 in, and if they can do it, then they're usually uh, they're usually equalizing, but I think white in general is, is never worse. And if black can't get the c5 break in, then a lot of times black can end up worse. So I feel like white is um, having almost, almost uh, like a risk-free situation. Um, black's other option on knight g5, that's a little bit sharper, to play bishop takes h2. And this wins a pawn for black after knight g4 check. Um, but black does have to give up the dark squared bishop. And then after white plays f3 here, which I think is the, the precise move, um, knight e3 is now working because the knight uh, gets pinned and, and lost. Um, so after f3, black goes back, white pushes e4. White gets a lot of compensation for the pawn, gets a very nice dark square bishop, very nice center. Black is enabled to push c5, so he always has to figure out this passive bishop. In general, I feel like this is a pretty fun position for white to play. You know, bishop e3, knight can come to e2. Okay, here I think there is e5 as well. Um, so let's say something like this, and yeah, just tons of play for white. So I was kind of hoping Jeffrey would go for this, since like this line with knight g5 h6, it's kind of solid, like, you know, black is often just trying to equalize, whereas this one, okay, is a little bit more interesting. So I was hoping, I was hoping to kind of provoke him <laughs> into, into going for this position, because I feel like white's white's chances here are, are, are pretty good. Um, but he spent some time, he ends up playing h6, knight e4, bishop e7. And I think this is a, a very solid approach. Uh, I trade on f6, knight takes f6, and I go knight e4. And uh, yeah, now if black takes on e4, bishop takes e4, I think black equalizes here pretty straightforwardly. You can play like queen b6 and bring a rook to c8 and eventually organize c5. Um, but it's a very kind of dry position, so I wasn't really expecting him to, to go for this because, I mean, zero chance I, I win the game, but yeah, maybe I don't lose and... Okay, of course, I don't think a draw is what he wants from uh, from this game. Uh, so he goes knight d7. 
he avoids the trade of knights, keeps the knight on the board. But now, okay, he has to be kind of careful and make sure that he's able to get uh, c5 in. Um, so I spent a little bit of time here. I ended up playing bishop d2. I'm not sure if this is really the most accurate move, though. I think there have been some games with rook to d1. I think b3 maybe uh, is better objectively to put the bishop on b2. Um, with bishop d2, the idea is to play b4. Oops and fix the c5 square. And then, okay, something like a6, for example, b4, then I think white is just doing uh, fantastically. So black has to has to act quickly here um, before white is able to do this. And if a5, then I think something like a3, and white can again play for b4, a4, bishop, b4, stuff like this. And yeah, sometimes white can get a little bit of a strategic advantage. Um, so here he ends up I think spending a decent amount of time and ends up playing f5, which uh, feels like a very ambitious move because he's kicking my knight off of e4 so that he can play c5 and um, also uh, weakening the e6 pawn at the same time. So this move is kind of uh, double-edged. I think actually he could have played c5 right away, but um, then I guess the position kind of equalizes very, very quickly. Let's say white takes and... Well, I can take a bunch of times on c5 and then take the bishop on d3, but yeah, then we get something like this with equal material and uh, basically white is definitely never worse. I think black equalizes, but yeah, it doesn't seem like the position you would you would want as black um, if, you're, if you're playing for a win. So he starts mixing it up with f5. I played knight g3 because knight c3, I mean, just didn't... Uh, didn't feel right, like the knight doesn't feel that good here. And on g3, I'm closer to the king side, and I have ideas like queen b3 and, and taking on f5. Uh, and now he goes c5. So, yeah, this was like super intimidating, I have to say, because he's just kind of lighting the board on fire, f5, c5. Um, but once I kind of calmed down, like I started calculating and yeah, I actually realize things aren't aren't that bad here for White. And uh, I know Jeffrey, I mean, he's an incredibly strong player, but I've seen a lot of his games and I know he does take risks. So a lot of times he does stuff that's kind of dubious, but, you know, he he plays actively and uh, he's very successful. But it also means that, you know, you it's not like you're just going to lose. Like you do, have, you do have chances. So I calculate for a little bit. I end up taking on B5. I just felt like this has to be the critical move, right, to accept the, the sacrifice. Uh, he took on d4, and now bishop c4. So, I mean, this move just felt right, basically, like just immediately targeting the weakness. If black takes on e3, then I can throw in this one. Let's say king moves somewhere, and uh, I can take with the bishop here. f4 is not really scary because we have rook d1, and then rook takes d7. And so I calculate a little bit further, like to make sure there's no like crazy tactics here, like g takes h2. Um, but yeah, I think I think white is just doing extremely well. Um, so yeah, honestly, wasn't sure what he was gonna play here because it really looks very scary. Like e6 is hanging, I'm also threatening knight takes f5. So if knight c5, I just take here and looks like black's position is just collapsing. Like he doesn't really have um, a lot of counterplay. Um, So he ends up going rook f6, which I think I, yeah, I just did not expect at all. <laughs> I saw the move was possible, but to me it just looked, uh, it didn't look like it was going to happen. I thought he was going to play like king h8 or something, but yeah, rook f6 totally unexpected. Because uh, it feels like it's just allowing knight takes f5 and just like winning uh, another pawn. Um, but then I realized his idea is probably going to be to go knight e5 here. And um, then let's say knight takes e7, queen takes e7. A little bit worried about this position because I feel like black might have like some knight of three checks somewhere. And it starts to look very scary around uh, around my king. But I don't know. I mean, I can take on d4 and actually it's, there's nothing immediate. Um, if rook g6, we can play f3. And if knight f3, we can take and, and rook g6 is covered. Um, but yeah, from afar, I... Didn't really like the, the looks of it. I guess minimum black can play knight c4 and plant the bishop on d5 and um, 
yeah, it's always going to have great compensation here with the, the opposite color bishops. Um, so that was kind of the first option, but then I thought knight h5 is just stronger because I'm just hitting the rook, and then on rook g6, I have knight f4. Again, hitting the rook, defending g2, hitting e6. And yeah, I really didn't see what, what was wrong with it. So I ended up just going that at knight h5. To me, it looked actually a lot, a lot better. Um, and I, st I still actually had no idea like what what he's playing for here. Finally, he shows me. He goes bishop d6, which somehow I just like didn't didn't consider. Although once you see it, then okay, yeah, it looks it looks like a very thematic move actually. So he's sacrificing the exchange, but he wants to get the queen in, shore up e6, and then he has two bishops pointed at white's king, and uh, maybe the knight comes in somewhere. So I didn't think like. I'm losing here, but I felt like, uh-oh, like things are about to get about to get ugly. Um, so I thought about not taking the rook, but the problem is if I don't take the rook right now, he's gonna go rook g6, and then the queen is opened up to h4. So something like this, for example, like rook g6, let's say, I don't know, g3, queen h4. I uh, did not want uh, any, uh, any part of this. Um, so I end up taking on f6 pretty much just out of necessity. I'm like, I probably have to take here. I don't think I'm losing if I take, so I should definitely take the, the exchange. So queen takes f6. Now I took on d4. And um, I was actually kind of expecting him to sack on h2, but this is actually very, very flawed thinking because um, the idea would be to do like a double bishop sack and, uh, and then if white takes, black has uh, perpetual. Um, but number one, I don't think he's he's playing for a draw, even if he's uh, worse. But number two, even if he does go for this, like white doesn't have to take the bishop. White can play like f3 and um, black might end up being down a, like a ton of material here, like at least, uh, at least a full piece possibly. Because queen g3, there's always like bishop e1, for example. And yeah, white has a lot of extra material. Um, so this line actually just doesn't even work for him. And then said he just plays like knight b6 and just playing for uh, compensation. And yeah, honestly, it was quite tough to, to play this position. I think I'm definitely intimidated by the opponent. Um, I think if I'm playing like a low rate of player here or, or someone, yeah, not as strong, then I think I'm feeling a lot better with my like extra exchange and pawn. <laughs> but against Jeffrey Zhang, like two bishops pointed at my king, there's all these like queen h4, rook c8, just like, yeah, you start to see so many ghosts um, over the board. So I uh, play queen b3 here, probably not a great move. Um, I guess my thinking was I just wanted to stop knight d5 and uh, put the pin on the bishop. And it kind of forces black to take on c4, which simplifies the position. But yeah, objectively, I mean, giving up the light square bishop is kind of a big deal. So I could have done a couple of different things here. I think like bishop e5 is playable, bishop e2. I'm not really worried about the d4 pawn here because um, white is up an exchange and a pawn. So if black takes one pawn, then white is still up a clean exchange. And so that's still like a decisive amount of material. As long as I can just get my rooks active and not allow counterplay, white should have a winning position. But um, yeah, easier said than done. Uh, you know, looking at it now, it's like a lot easier to, uh, to kind of um, not fully believe in black's attack or black's chances, but over the board, it's, yeah, it's pretty scary. Um, so queen b3, he takes on c4, I take rook c8, uh, I drop back queen e2, now he goes bishop d5. I was kind of expecting rook c2 here, just to activate the rook, and uh, my plan was to go like rook c1, takes, rook b1, um, and yeah, just try to trade off a pair of rooks, um, of course create, create play against the bishop. So yeah, I wasn't sure exactly what's going on here. But I definitely felt like I'm, I'm at least fine. Uh, he goes bishop d5, and uh, then I pretty quickly just played rook a c1 here. And uh, yeah, now he started spending quite a bit of time, and I realized, okay, actually my position is probably very, very good. You know, perfectly fine. I mean, up an exchange and a pawn. His bishops look nice, but like if he doesn't have any actual play, then I'm just up an exchange, 
and it should just be like a technical position like white should just be winning um and yeah black doesn't really have stuff like okay you can take on c1 play queen h4 i'll go like h3 and there's no there's no real mate it's just uh you know two bishops cover a lot of squares so there's there's some some compensation there um but yeah he ends up going rook takes c1 which was a big big achievement i felt to get the rooks off i was actually expecting him to keep the rook on the board but okay then he doesn't get to take the pawn and yeah white keeps a, a lot of extra material so he takes on c1 and goes queen takes d4 now we're just an exchange up but honestly i feel like black has tons of compensation because the the two bishops are very strong in particular the light square bishop and i felt like you know i'm like one mistake away from uh from blowing the game in fact for a while I was considering bishop c3 and it, it took me a while to realize that queen f4 is just like yeah one of these blunders <laughs> so I was like like hmm and then I was also considering bishop e3 but um yeah here I didn't quite like queen e5 where I think I would have to play uh g3 in this position and so I didn't really like the looks of this although maybe this really wasn't wasn't so bad because actually if black plays queen e4 f3 we're very very happy to go for the end game to you know get the queens off in fact i think white's just like completely winning here because without the queens there's no attack and, and white's rook is going to be uh, very very strong um so this was probably the way to go and uh i still think it would be a very difficult position for white to actually um convert but yeah, I mean, this this was a big, big chance to get just a serious, serious advantage, you know, against a very, very strong player. I end up going rook c8 check, king h7, and rook d8. And this one is really, honestly, kind of hard to explain. I mean, I'm just trying to put a little pressure from behind, you know, make it hard for black. I feel like his pieces are kind of all lined up and just trying to mess with the coordination as well. Um, but I, yeah, just simply missed... Uh, missed his response which was to take on h2 and then when you played it I'm like, oh my God. it's like so obvious once once you see it he has queen h4 check and the rook is just like it's just hanging just like a, a basic tactic and it's very strange that i missed this because like i saw queen h4 was an idea with like a nice double attack i can go rook takes d6 but somehow th this didn't like signal alarm bells in my head that uh you know i need to uh watch out for for tactics here so if i got to blunder check on this move you know i just like not paying attention and yeah he snaps on h2 and all of a sudden now we're just worse if we play king h1 or king f1 there's queen h4 anyway and it's uh super super dangerous so i'm kind of forced to take the bishop queen h4 check king g1 queen takes d8 and now black is left with uh, an extra pawn um, now, granted, I'm a bit fortunate here that I'm left with opposite color bishops, so I still felt like actually I have very, very good drawing chances. Um, but yeah, very frustrating to go from a position where you're up the exchange, you know, maybe better, like, maybe close to winning, like who knows, and all of a sudden you're worse, your opponent gets to play for two results, and it's like a new game is now now just starting. Um, so, I don't know, at least the good thing is that I felt like I had... Uh, the position on my side you know there are a lot worse positions to be down upon it than one with with opposite color bishops um so a3 a5 uh bishop c3 just trying to put everything on on the right square a4 he kind of fixes this one queen e3 and my idea here was to just try to keep a blockade on the dark square so here i'm playing queen g5 just putting pressure on g7 I felt like he's probably going to go g5 at some point to make progress, then my, my queen will sneak in. Um, and of course, black has to be very careful about the end games that he goes for, because a lot of the end games are, are going to be drawn. Um, so he starts kind of maneuvering and trying to, to make a little bit of progress, but it's really not that easy for, for black to do a lot here, rather than just, uh, just shuffle. So check bishop d4, queen e7, I drop back, he goes here. Uh, king h2, finally g5 is played, queen d4, king to g6. Unfortunately for me, the hard thing is that there's not a whole lot I can do other than just sit and wait. Like I can invade with queen h8, but there's uh, generally very little 
little follow-up. Like let's say here, black can play this one, bishop g7. Um, we actually here, I think we've we've managed to to trick ourselves into some counterplay. There's still queen d6 check, so black is um, is fine. But yeah, maybe black plays like queen f7 first, and then can go like king h5, queen g6, and it's actually very hard for white to to do anything. And then black is slowly going to kind of prepare g4, f4, some some break. Um, white is still totally fine, but yeah, there's no need to to go in just yet. So I, I keep shuffling, king g1, f4, king h2, king h5, queen e5, bishop d5. Here I play queen h8, queen f7. Now if bishop uh, g7, then just queen g6 here, and, and black will play g4, and so this one I'm not really getting enough pressure, so there's no need to uh, to commit the pieces. Um, I drop back queen e5, queen g6, and, uh, and now I go back queen h8, and this was, I think, really a strange mistake, because like black goes g4, and, and there was really no need to allow this. Like, obviously right now g4 is not is not uh, being threatened. And instead I should just make like a completely neutral move, like bishop d4 or king g1. There's really nothing actually that so scary that black can do here. King h4 is met with check. If check, then I'm just going back to h2. And um, yeah, at a certain point, black will probably have to try the end game. And uh, of course there, are, there will be chances um, here, but this one is definitely not as bad as uh, um, as the end game, I end up getting later on. Um, what about g4 check? I don't think it really is uh, is bad, but I don't know if I needed this one. Um, let's say here, and I don't know, queen takes or king takes. Um, like black will get the queen out, and I didn't really see if this is if I'm helping black or not. To me, I felt like I might actually be helping the opponent because I'm opening up. Um, a lot more squares to uh, to work with, but but honestly, I wasn't sure. I'm also um, uh, kind of creating a, another weakness on on f3 that didn't really exist before. A uh, question about a3 versus b3. I mean, in general, with opposite color bishops, the defensive side is trying to keep their pawns on the same color as the bishop, so I can try to keep the blockade and keep it defended. Um, but uh, yeah, I think if I had played b3 earlier, then the bishop is always kind of loose and the pawn might be hanging. So I, f I feel like this was the right approach here because uh, yeah, we're trying to, to maintain a fortress. Um, so yeah, queen h8, big mistake just on a practical level because it allows black to push g4 and he's able to get this break and clearly this was his idea. Um, so yeah, I really should have done just like almost almost anything else here. Um, so queen h8, g4, uh, I draw back, and now um, queen f5. Because if he goes queen g5, then I think I actually have some kind of perpetual here. I think I can take and uh, play queen e2 check here. And uh, then if this one, I think we have this check, if I'm not mistaken. There might be other ways as well, but I think this is what I was looking at during the game. And, and this might actually be, this one would be bad for black. On this one, we have this one. And then if here, then we have this one. And that also uh, starts to look very, very dangerous for black. Just losing, so. Um, something like this, queen b5 here, and, and, and we would probably um, repeat. But, uh, yeah, instead he goes queen f5, which is a lot more accurate because here the king has has more squares. And um, here after takes, takes, if I were to go queen e2 check, um, then I, I felt like f3 was very, very dangerous. And then let's say takes, bishop takes, or he could even consider, sorry, he can't throw this one and he didn't check. But yeah, let's say takes and bishop takes. And then I don't know, I wasn't sure, really wasn't sure about this. And uh, yeah, if this check, maybe queen e4, and I think a lot of the end games are, are gonna be um, very difficult for white here since black spawns are, 
for our split. Um, so yeah, queen f5, this feel, starts to feel like a very critical moment um, because now white has the option of the end game or can take on g4 first and then go for the end game. And uh, yeah, it was definitely a difficult uh, decision. Um, now I end up taking here and taking on f5, which is probably the worst thing that white could have done. I think keeping the queens on the board was, was probably the... Uh, maybe the simplest, but actually this end game was pretty straightforward, just trading and going bishop d2. Um, because here I'm able to pick up the f4 pawn right away and, and get a pretty nice version of the end game uh, that we, we end up getting. Um, so black takes here, let's say we take, bishop takes, bishop takes here. Um, yeah, I think white is holding this one because he can't go king g4. We're taking this one. Black plays something like king g6, then white gets um, a pretty simple blockade on the board and, and should hold this one quite comfortably. Um, so black can go king g5. And I was kind of thinking about this during the game, but I couldn't quite make it work. But white can go g3 here. Otherwise, black would be getting like g3 and uh, or possibly taking, and it would be pretty bad, but g3, white is able to win the uh, four pawn, so it's kind of a cool idea. Black takes with the bishop, then we take here, and yeah, again, we just have like a very simple blockade, and I think white holds this one very, very easily. Um, I wasn't so sure about this one, but here it's actually the same. White just takes, brings the king around to f2, and is fa in fact is totally fine. The only thing is we have to watch out for this like h4 break, so maybe the bishop moves somewhere. But basically, black black has no way of breaking through here. White's just holding a very, very simple fortress. Um, so that would have done it. That would have drawn the game, I think, as well as just keeping the queen, uh, the queens on the board. Maybe like queen g7 here. I think still keeps our um, our chances very much alive. Well, I'm not sure actually. Black can maybe take on. Um, F3, maybe something like queen e2, and I think we're we're still okay. Um, but I end up going here, takes, takes, queen takes f5. And uh, he thinks for a while here and takes with the pawn. During the game, I actually thought king takes was more likely. And my idea was to play g3 to try to set up um, the fortress, but I think it actually doesn't work. Now, if black goes f3, king g1, then this one white is holding very easily because the king and bishop will uh, will blockade. Um, but after e5, actually, I think black wins very simply um, because I'm not able to to, to establish the, uh, the the fortress. So, for example, takes takes. In general, what white needs to do is keep the king on f2 and bring the bishop to uh, to h2. Otherwise, with the bishop on f2, black's king would just be way too active. Um, but the problem is we can't really stop black from pushing the h-pawn quite far. And the fact that the pawn is on f4 makes a difference because it like blocks white's bishop. So, for example, let's say we try this one, king g4, king f2, h5. Basically, we can't stop black from, from pushing the pawn here. We'd have to play king to g1 at some points. And um, okay, now black can play here or cross over this way. And essentially, white is never holding this position because there's always going to be f2 first or h2 first, and um, black is enough. And it feels like there's some luck on our, our uh, on our side here because black has the wrong color uh, rook pawn. But the problem is in all these end games, white's king always ends up further <laughs> from the queen side. So we're we're not holding this one. Black's king just walks over and. Um, takes everything. Here, actually, I think we can even, yeah, just take and it's just winning. So, um, so yeah, this one is actually, I think was just winning for black in a pretty simple way. Uh, so I was actually kind of surprised that he ended up taking with the pawn here. Take with the pawn is also winning, but uh, it turns out being much harder. Um, and uh, yeah, in that line, I mean, white had no no way of rushing towards a1 because black um, just taking all the pawns and yeah, we're never 
were never in time to uh, to get to the corner. Um, so he ends up taking e f five. I go bishop e one. This is kind of the only thing I can do because um, on on f three uh, I'm trying to go g three. Otherwise, if uh, White allows black to just trade on f3 and take with the king. I think it's just immediately over because uh, this f pawn is way too strong. Um, so bishop e1, he starts pushing h5. Actually, at this point, I kind of felt like it's probably losing, but I didn't exactly see how. <laughs> so I was cautiously optimistic. Um, he shuffles around a bit. Bishop c6, he pushes h4, bishop f2, bishop d5, he goes f3, now I gotta go g3, only move really. If I take king, uh, well here he takes with the bishop, but it's still completely winning, um, as he's gonna just push h3 and then bring his bishop around, bring his king to e2, and uh, yeah, essentially white just doesn't hold. Uh, so g3. And now if black were to take this one, then bishop takes g3. Here white is white is totally fine because it's just one square that we have to blockade and it's it's very, very simple. Uh, but of course he goes h3 to create a second pass pawn. Bishop f2, bishop e6, bishop e1, f4. Bishop f2, so I'm trying to hold on so that if takes, I can take. And basically the setup that I'm playing for is this position with the king on f2 and bishop on h2. And I knew that if I could get this one, then this is actually a very, very easy draw because black just has nothing to do to kind of create, uh, uh, to break through. The king can approach these pawns, but as soon as it hits c2, white puts the bishop on e5. And if black plays h2 here, we can take, and we always have the second pawn um, to hold on to. So it's just, uh, just a fortress, nothing black can do here. So yeah, if I can get this one, then I'm holding on. Um, but of course he doesn't take on g3, he just makes a waiting move. And uh, now if I don't take on f4 and I make a move like bishop to e1, then black has this breakthrough with f2. So this was very annoying. Takes, king comes in, bishop has to come back, king e2, and then f3, and black is winning with, uh, with the pawns. Um, so, I'm forced to take on f4, king takes f4, and now I can't get the right setup because my king and bishop need to switch places. Because here black has the winning plan of just bringing the king to e2. I go king g1, h2, and game over. Uh, so I play bishop b6, bishop g4. I play bishop g1 now. I don't really have a choice. If I play king g1, then uh, I think I'm still not in time here because uh, black can play here, and if king f2, then there's, um, sorry, if king f2, there's h2, and if bishop c7, then there's king e3, and I don't get my king to the critical f2 square. So no, white is, white is losing this one. Yeah, because I'm just losing the bishop pretty soon, and uh, the king is too far, so I'm not, never able to get to the, the corner. Even if I was able to get to the corner, actually, I was thinking about that end game, and that might also still be bad, because black plays King to c1, bishop goes to b1, white is in stalemate, and then I gotta go b4 and a b3 and black wins. So I was also thinking, oh man, it might be bad even, <laughs> even if we do get to the corner. Um, I wasn't totally sure on that, but this one definitely, definitely lost. So bishop g1, and basically I'm just waiting for the king to move so I can go king g3, king f2. Um, so I... Um, can get this one. Question if the bishop could be on d2. Black is still always breaking through, just king d3, king e2. If white's king is not on f2, then this f pawn is just, uh, f and h pawns are just way too strong here. Um, so I play here, king g3. He goes king d3. Of course, I can't take because the pawns will promote. King f2. And so I get this setup, but the problem is I'm one tempo too slow. Black has king c2 and he's able to win the b2 pawn. So if I had an extra move here to go bishop h2 and bishop e5, uh, then white is holding a very, very easy draw. But here I'm losing this b pawn and it makes makes all the difference in the world. So now after bishop h2, for example, takes and bishop d6, black just pushes h2 and it's game over. 
I have to take this pawn. King takes a3, and then uh, black just wins because the he's going to promote the a pawn. I'm going to have to give the bishop up for the pawn, and then his bishop and pawn will uh, survive forever and, and win the day. If I could put my king on a1, then the position would be a very simple draw because this bishop would uh, be able to sacrifice for the f pawn. And then, of course, we have the, the famous draw with the uh, wrong color rook pawn. But of course, the king is just way too far. So um, yeah, basically, I'm just not in time. Like his king is able to cross over, and uh, I wasn't wasn't able to do anything here. So king c2, uh, king g3. I do end up finding the only way not to resign, which uh, was pretty important actually, and because this move again would have just lost immediately after h2. This is just uh, resignable position. Um, but I do find king g3 takes and bishop c5, and at least here it's actually not that easy for black to win, because it feels like the pawns are stuck, and um, I'm holding the a3 pawn. Um, but it is, it isn't a, uh, it is a winning endgame for black if he finds uh, the right setup. It's actually kind of an interesting, interesting puzzle. So at the moment he can't do anything. If he tries to maneuver the bishop, then uh, one of the pawns will will drop. So he starts bringing the king back, and white's just shuffling. I have nothing else to do. King to e4. Now I play king f2. Very important that I don't let the king into e3. And um, here I'm holding on to, to this blockade. So he keeps shuffling here, bishop h2, bishop c4, played here. And um, he actually starts moving back and forth a little bit, which made me think like, oh, he, he you know doesn't know how to win. <laughs> so because actually I hadn't really understood how black wins either. I felt like he should have something, but I didn't really, um, I didn't really see what he can do. But I'm just holding the fortress. So I'm just kind of waiting for him to um, to come up with an idea. Um, so here I put the king on g3 to attack the pawn. He goes here, I bring it back, goes bishop b5, king g3, bishop d7, king back, bishop h2, I'm just maintaining the fortress. He goes back this way, goes to e4. Uh, the clock situation at this point, uh, we're both, this is the end of the game, you know, move 87. So we both have like less than uh, two, three minutes, I think, for this whole end game. Uh, actually, there are many moments where I was under a minute and having to make a decision. Uh, which is very, very difficult because you just have the 30 second increment and yeah, not a lot of time because I mean, this was, uh, the game started at 6 p.m. So this was like 11.30 at night. <laughs> so it's getting late. And uh, yeah, my head is already kind of like spinning and I'm trying to figure out like, how is he gonna, you know, try to, to, to break through and what should my setup be? But yeah, it was very, very hard to stay, uh, to stay focused here. So he goes Bishop D7. Uh, bishop g1, bishop b5, play king g3, bishop f1, king f2. He goes bishop g2. So finally he puts the bishop on g2, which seems like, okay, maybe it's helping. Bishop h2, king d5. He starts going back towards the a-pawn. Um, now he goes bishop h1. I play king g1. You know, originally my idea was actually to hold on with the king on g3. And I didn't see how he's going to break through. King on g3, bishop on g2. And I'm just holding on to this one. Um, but then I started thinking, okay, I can go king g1. Like, what's what's the big deal? Uh, he goes king b3. So I can't take the bishop. Then there's f2. Uh, but I have bishop c5. And um, I'm still, the pawns are still stuck. Uh, bishop g2, bishop d6. Now he starts coming uh, around back, king c4, bishop b8, king d4, king f2, king d5, bishop c7, and we're keeping the, the same fortress as before. And then he goes king b3. Uh, and then here, yeah, I think I had like 45 seconds, like I'm thinking like I can go king g1, I can go king g3. I'm like not really seeing the difference, like the king is stopping both pawns. And then I was like, well, king g1 worked last time. Let's go king g1. Like, let's stick to the same the same setup. I mean, I, yeah, it's move 100. So my brain is really starting to turn into, into mush at this point. Um, king g3 was, was better. Because after king g1, 
He goes king b2. Okay, I have to waste the move, so I play bishop c5. And now bishop f1. So he very carefully puts the bishop on c5, or he gets it off d6, because after king b2, I'm essentially uh, in Zugzwang here. I do have to move the bishop. If I move the king, then h2 would win on the spot, because I have to take this one. King takes a3, and then black is again just winning this endgame. Um, so I do have to move the bishop, and now he goes bishop f1. So I can't take because of h2. And uh, now the bishop is actually getting out. So if I play bishop d6, if I keep uh, just shuffling, then uh, black is able to get the bishop out and actually has this plan of just putting the bishop on c6 and then playing h2, which I don't know if Jeffrey had seen at this point or, or not. He was moving pretty quickly. Um, but basically this one this one would win for black, although maybe this was the best try because at least it would force him to uh, to find it. So for example, let's say I play here, bishop c6, bishop d6, and then black plays this one. And if I take with the bishop, then he's taking here and he breaks through because of the pawns. Uh, and if I take with the king, then there's f2 and I'm not stopping this one. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't have a way of keeping the bishop on this diagonal and on this diagonal. And I can't exactly move my king either, because if my king leaves the f-pawn, then... Um, sorry, here, no, he's not uh, He's not pushing this one. What would black do here? Um, here, I think... Black has to defend this one. It should be should be breaking through here. Uh, King G three, totally gonna lose my mind here. <laughs> just like just like in in the game, um, there's still Bishop G four, but then White can at least keep sitting. Wait, let me go back a step here. So. Bishop b5, let's say white goes here. Uh, bishop c6, let's say I try to hold with uh, king h2. Because f2 I can, I have time to take both pawns. Quickly, does black do this? Pretty sure it is winning. Let me double check this one. Go back here. Oh, so here actually black does have to be precise. Wow, I walked into like a very funny mutual zugzwang here. So here white is, white is drawing. If black waits for one move, Then white is is kind of stuck. So king h2. Uh, bishop f1. King goes back. Say king moves. And uh, yeah, if I keep shuffling here, then there's f2. Um, and we're not in time. So king g3, and, and black moves the king. We had a similar zugzwang in the game, actually, where I can take the pawn two ways, but both are, both are really bad. It's bishop takes, king takes pawn. If king takes, uh, pawn pushes to h2. So this was still the best try. Black is still winning here. Um, but I end up going king h2 in this position and just running into f2 immediately, which kind of just ends the game. Because I can't take, I lose the a pawn, and then on king g3, uh, he has this very nice zugzwang with king b3. 
Otherwise, actually, it's it's kind of amazing why it would be holding. Like if the bishop had to move here, then I can take this one and I'm in time to take this one. And so then black is left with one pawn and it's a draw. And if bishop g2, then I can take the f pawn with the king and there's no h2. But with the bishop on f1, I can't take on f2 with the king because the pawn just skates through. So black just kills a move with the king and I'm not able to take with anything if the bishop uh, moves here. Uh, then black is pushing h2 and on king takes h2 just moving the bishop and this pawn is promoting so one one of the pawns is, is promoting no matter what uh, so king b3 and that was basically it i played king h2 and now my king is not tagging the pawn so now black can play bishop g2 here i would have king takes f2 but with my king on h2 of course i can't i have to take this way uh, king takes a3 and yeah, I ended up resigning here, move 106, because um, now it's just a, a trivial end game win. I'll have to give up my bishop for the a pawn, and then black will walk the king around back and win with the correct color h pawn. So it's kind of funny, yeah, if you tran uh, transfer white's king over to a1 and put the bishop on h2, then it's a dead draw. Very, very simple, because <laughs> the king is in front of the, the right pawn. But here, of course, black is, is just winning. So yeah, real bummer. Um, and during the game, I was actually very confused because I thought like, honestly, going into the end game, actually at first I thought it was drawn, then I thought it was lost. Uh, and then he started kind of shuffling around. So I thought, oh, maybe it's drawn actually. Maybe there's no way for black to win. And then I thought it was losing. Then I thought I'm holding again. It finally ended up losing. It's like such a, <laughs> such a roller coaster of emotion, you know? Um, and uh, it was kind of painful to find out that I actually missed quite a simple, simple draw. Um, if we go back, I mean, this was really the, the key moment where, where white can choose between putting the king on g1 and putting the king on g3. And earlier I realized, you know, the king should be on g3 because I'm attacking both pawns. It makes it kind of harder for black to move. Um, but yeah, somehow I just confused myself and... Um, end up going king g1 and uh, and then the end game is losing because the king is, is just not not as active there um, and actually Jeffrey made a big big mistake putting his bishop on on g2 in fact this is a huge blunder that kind of blows the wind for black if white plays defense correctly um, because now the bishop is actually stuck the bishop has a very hard time getting out because white is keeping his bishop on on this diagonal so he puts the king on b3 here, bishop h1. Um, after the right move, king g3, there's actually nothing black can do. I play here, I'm covering this one, I'm threatening to take the pawn. And uh, if he goes bishop g2, then white is just shuffling back and forth, and it's actually very simple. So there's no zugzwang because white can just shuffle back and forth. Uh, he can't really go h2 or f2. If he plays bishop f1 in this position with my bishop covering h2, I can just snag this pawn and there's no h2. And if he makes me uh, wait a move with king to b2, then it doesn't matter. Let's say bishop c5, bishop f1. I'm not able to take the pawn in this position, but I can just go back bishop d6 and black is not making any progress because I'm threatening um, to take this one. So if he goes here, then I'm in time to take this and f2, king g3, white is holding. And if he goes bishop e2 to defend the pawn, then I can't take here because of f2, but I can play bishop c5 back. And now I'm threatening to take this pawn once again. And so black just can't make any, any progress. Bishop f1, I'll drop back here. So it's a little tricky for white because you can't, you can't rush to take these pawns. You have to be very careful that you're not uh, allowing black to promote. But the bishop just shuffles c5, d6 back and forth, and black isn't able to, uh, to win. So this was kind of a bummer because we had basically like two chances to do this where the bishop was on g2 and we could have put the king on g3 and just uh, and just made a very simple uh, fortress. Um, so it's kind of a bummer to miss it because it's really a matter of like schematic thinking, like figuring out like, okay, this is how you hold it. Because once you understand like, oh, king on g3, bishop defends the pawn, you know, don't let black's king get to the uh, e3 or e2 squares. Really, really very simple. So it was winning for black earlier. The big mistake from, from black was putting the bishop on g2. This is what allows white to kind of get um, the fortress. I think if he puts the bishop on d5, let's say, 
then he can break through. So for example, king d4, bishop h2, king here, bishop d6, king b3, I play king g3, and uh, the difference here is black as h2. So with the bishop on d5, this is the breakthrough. And uh, there wasn't really a way for white to um, avoid this one. So he actually was winning in kind of a somewhat simpler fashion, but okay, we were both in time trouble, so it wasn't that obvious. But yeah, then we had our chance to hold it as well, and unfortunately, unfortunately blew it. Um, but this one would have been would have been good for, for black. Um, let's say we play here and here and this one. Um, we have kind of that end game from before. So we can play like here, for example, with the bishop. Play this one so white isn't able to take here. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this should be should be winning. Let's say, um, yeah, if bishop moves, then there's h2. And if king f2 here, then king b3. King has to go back to g3, otherwise h2. Um, but actually, we're just playing h2 uh, no matter what. Um, no, in this previous position, h2 wasn't winning because uh, we can take and still still cover this one. But the bishop on c5. But with the bishop on d6, then then black is able to, to push h2. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, important for black to kind of approach b3 at the right moment. Like when white's king is on f2, this is kind of the right time to, to play this one. Because then white can't play bishop c5 because of h2 and then here. Um, black is still in time with this one. So it's kind of a tricky win. Like you really have to time it properly, but pretty instructive. Um, so yeah, uh, disappointing to lose the game, but what can you do? Um, I felt like I defended all right. Definitely could have defended better. Honestly, I really wanted this half point. I think it would, if I could have held the game, it would have been, it would have been quite nice. So yeah, a bit unfortunate. Honestly, I feel like I should have had more chances to win. I mean, it was up the exchange. His compensation was running out. So next time, next time, hopefully we uh, we can do better. Stop.